man, got around over December back here. And today, guys, just like the last, I think I've been here now. This is my second week back east, dude. I'm still sick. So I don't have any stories of victory and glory. But what I do have, I'm going to tell you some tales from the dark side, dude. It's going to open you up to understanding that if you're not about that life, then stay out here. Because if you're not built for the dark, stay as far away as you can and stay in the light. Because once you go in the dark, dude, you might not be able to come back out. So without further ado, we're going to get into the topic of today's video, which is in maximum security prison, once you go back door, you won't go front door with women when you get out. And this is the most scary thing I try to share with you youngsters, man, that, you know, the dangers of maximum security prison. I think the number one danger to me, dude, is uh, losing your life in there. And you can lose your life in a multitude of ways, whether you get thrown off the tear, you get stabbed up, dude. You get beat to death, you know what I mean? Or, here's the one that you don't consider. You're protecting your masculinity, your manhood against them, dude. Uh, a sex-crazed lifer. A demonically possessed sodomite, dude. And he's not taking no for an answer. See, this is what you don't understand. A lot of these youngsters come on here talking about, Oh man, if you stand up for yourself, and you have boundaries, dude. And you, you know, you tell the guys what you stand for. You ain't with the madness. They'll leave you alone. That's not true, man. This is not a movie. This is reality. And a lot of these guys don't take no for an answer. And, dude, sometimes, man, in the heat of the battle, you don't mean to kill the dude, but defending your masculinity, dude, you kill him like you might hit him. His head busts, busts against the metal bunk. Then he busts it on the wall and he falls down, dude. Hits the back of his head. And now he's got, you know, a contusion, dude. Or he's got hemorrhaging of the brain, dude. Or you accidentally broke his neck. And now you got life in prison. So, to me, having life in prison is just as bad as being dead. Because you're dead to the world. You're never getting out, man. And once you've been in maximum security prison, you see the depravity, the pervertedness, dude. The demonic nature. The darkness in there. You realize there's no more humanity inside the walls, behind the walls, deep in the belly of the beast. And you're just as well being dead. You're a zombie. You're the undead. So for me, that's just as bad as being killed, man. You get you get life in prison for to protecting yourself. What kind of life is that, man? So the reason I'm bringing that up, man, um, in maximum security prison, once you go back door, you won't go, you won't go front door with women when you get out. Man, most of the cats that get out of prison, I would say, man, 95% of them when they get out, dude, yeah, they might have a wife or a girlfriend or a fuck buddy or friends with benefits that waited for them and held them down. But now they're they're mentally fucked. And now they're hooked on the man butt, dude. And all they want to do, man, is uh, they want to go up in dude's butt cheeks or have dudes go up in their butt cheeks. And that's what I want to share with you. I'm not trying to be offensive and say that it is a sickness. But it's like an addiction. Let's put it that way. Let's put it that way to make it fair. Because I don't want to... Uh, give the impression that I don't like homosexual people. I have homosexuals in my family. Um, I have friends who are homosexuals. Like, they're not close friends, but I've known them through bodybuilding and working out. The bodybuilding community is full of homosexuals, dude. Even the guys you look up to, some of the top guys are homosexuals, dude. It's just like, but you guys got to understand, a lot of homosexuals aren't flaming like, yeah, girl. They're just like regular dudes, but they're on the download. Or they're like Jack Donovan. They're masculine. But all they do is they like going up in man butt, dude, or having dudes going up in them. I can't uh, diagnose their psychosis. I just know let's just call it an addiction. But see what happens in, in maximum security prison once you go back door, you won't go front door with women when you get out. Yeah, you might go through the motions because uh, I'm not going to say any names, but there's some, some dudes in Northern California that did 20 years plus in maximum security prison. And they're, they're married. But when you, when you talk to them, when you look at them, you know they're just going through the motions because what they do. Oh, hey, babe, I'm going to go hang out with the homies. We're going to go shoot some pool. Or, you know what I'm saying, we're going to play some cards. And I'm going to be, you know, we're going to be up late. I'll be home late, babe. Just lock the door. Leave the nightlight off for me. And that's a cold word for, like, the movie Training Day when they was playing poker. The white dude was playing poker with the Mexican vatos. 
and the Mexican boxer says, "Hey, hey, Pete, have you ever have you ever had your shit pushed in?" And then the, the white dude goes, "No, man." And then the Mexi other Mexican dude goes, "I have my shit pushed in. I always get love from the homies." Let's just go ahead and uh, to give you the verbal cues that they're going to go up in you, man. And so you just got to understand, man, that's the danger of it, you youngsters. Once you're in maximum security prison, once somebody goes up in you, man, you got to look this up, man. The pleasure of the prostate gland in men is a prostate gland that's uh, behind, your, uh, it's behind your testicles, I believe. It's up in your rectum behind your, no, it's behind your, your penis. And uh, they say that gland is very pleasurable once a dude penetrates you like that, even forcefully. They say some dudes get so addicted to that feeling that that's all they want to do. So what they do is they turn out young dudes on the street so that they can then go ahead and go up in them. That's what Diddy does. Just so you guys don't know. You guys do your research. Go deep into the Diddy case. So what Diddy does, man. He has these parties and everybody's getting high for lean and Hennessy and weed and coke, right? And he brings these girls and ask, ask, look, do the research. He brings these sexy women in. So he has the, he has the young boys, these guys that want to be rappers, going up in the girls. And then Diddy does like Caligula. While you're going up in the girl, he goes up in you. And so you're, you're so high and you're so, you're so turned on going up in this hottie, this, this uh, baddie, as you guys say. You don't realize, man, what's going on until Diddy's up in you. Then once he busts nuts up in you, now you felt the, the pleasure of the prostate gland. So now you be going up in Diddy, dude. So that's how the whole thing, this whole rabbit hole happened with Diddy and all this stuff. So anyway, if you like the realness and rawness, man, thumbs up the video, man. Leave a comment for the algorithm. And most importantly, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. And then also, man, Hit the notification all bell because I don't know when I'm going to be uh, uploading videos and you guys can catch them all. And so until next time, hold yourself back. Out.